First time since 1992. Vern Lundquist along with Dan Deardorff. We welcome you. Uh, Buffalo 3-1, and one, and they've got this guy named Flutie playing very well at quarterback. Isn't he fun to watch, Vern? Although Doug telling us yesterday, a bit of a strange week. He feels like a rookie. They, he's never faced the Pittsburgh Steelers before. We know how complicated they are defensively. He's taking advice from everybody. His counterpart, Cordell Good. Stewart, just the opposite story. He's struggling. Oh, he really is, Vern. But you know what? It's not all his fault. Uh, he needs receivers to help him by catching the passes. They're running attack is kind of stagnant and quite frankly their offensive line isn't playing all that well. Pittsburgh at Buffalo. Home team has won the last 11 games in this series. Back with the kick after this. In Orchard Park, New York for this time of the year. 65 degrees. 84 percent humidity. Cloudy skies but they've taken rain out of the forecast. Steve Christie two touchbacks in his 20 kickoffs this season. The veteran place kicker will Kick it deep to either Will Blackwell or Troy Edwards, the rookie. They're underway as the Steelers win the toss, and Edwards lets this one go through the end zone. So touchback number three for Steve Christie, and an anxious Cordell Stewart comes on. The last two weeks, repetitious of the last four weeks last season. He got off to a, a quick start in 1999, but things have uh, not gone well for him for the last couple of days. 57%. No touchdown passes thus far uh, last week. One interception. He also fumbled three times, two of them resulting in safeties. Jerome Bettis, John Whitman in the backfield. Stewart will throw on first down, pumps, finds a receiver open for a five-yard gain. So a nice, comfortable play for Cordell Stewart up front, and Dan alluded to this. The line has not played well. Roger Duffy for the second week in a row replaces Fanica at left guard. Anthony Brown in place of Chris Conrad at right tackle. In the backfield, Bettis and Whitman. Courtney Hawkins and Hines Ward, the wideouts, and the tight end is Mark Bruner. Second and three. Jerome Bettis tries to cut back, and that's somewhat uh, reminiscent of last week's first play against Jacksonville when he was dropped for a four-yard loss. Defensively, we saw Bruce Smith and Phil Hansen. They are joined by the huge presence of Ted Washington up front. Linebackers, and what a game John Holosek had on Monday night. Sam Coward, Gabe Northern, and Sam Rogers join him, and a very young but very good secondary, Irvin Schultz, Jones, Thomas Smith. Third and two. Cornell Stewart. Looks across the middle, finds a receiver open. That's good for the first down at the 32. It's Hines Ward, number 86. Well, how's this, Vern, for trying to instill some confidence in your quarterback uh, right off the bat? Kevin Gilbride uh, calling the plays, goes to Cordell Stewart, letting him throw the ball their first two plays. Safe patterns, both short. Ward just starts the crossing pattern, sits down and stops in the hole. Two relatively high percentage passes, but yet passes that Pittsburgh in the last couple weeks has had trouble executing. Here's the handoff to Bettis, and he uh, tries to find a crack at right guard. He's after the 35. And Dan, in the early going, you think about a confidence building scheme for Cordell Stewart, and the Steelers, in converting that third down, have equaled what Miami was able to do on Monday night when they were one of 14. And that is, uh, that was one of the better defensive performances that I have seen in a long time with the Bills turned in defensively Monday night in Miami on a hot, sultry night on the road. Uh, they were even more stifling than the weather. Second down, seven. Ward in motion. Stewart is two for two. Lobs it out, caught by Bettis. He tries to get the ignition started. He gets out to the 38-yard line. Bill Cower in his eighth season. Last year's team, the first he did not take to the playoffs. Overall record, including playoffs, of 78 and 49. And Wade Phillips, now 52 years of age, in his second season as the head coach of the Buffalo Bills, replacing the legendary Marv Levy. I don't think there's an NFL person in this league that doesn't think the world of Wade Phillips. What a good guy. Third and four. Four receivers in the pattern. They toss it, and Richard Huntley gets the uh, toss, and he moves across the 42, but is down to there as Huntley comes in on third down, and this time the Bills do stiffen on third down. It'll be 
fourth down. And the Steelers right now kind of in between decisions. Some of the offensive teams still out on the field. Well, Bill Cowher had two <laughs> fourth down attempts last Sunday against Jacksonville. Fourth and a foot each time. He went for a quarterback rollout the first time and then the flea flicker the second time. Neither one of which <laughs> came close to picking up a first down. Bill's going to take a look at this measurement. It's certainly inside of a yard. About two feet. Yep. Well, he told us last <laughs> night, Dan, that he's against gonna Jacksonville, he's going to punt. And I, I, he said, I'm the guy who made the brilliant fourth down calls last week. Well, and, and I, you can understand why he did it going for it on fourth down. You, you question the nature of the calls. But offensively, Vern, didn't you get the feeling last week that if they were still playing that game, Pittsburgh still would not have scored an offensive touchdown? Yep. It was one of those days where they were just entirely out of sync. Uh, Cowher said he was trying to get yardage and chunks, and it was risk and reward on those two fourth down plays. The strength of this Steeler team is their defense, and by putting here, they're not going to put their defense in poor field position. Josh Miller is on the punt. And Kevin Williams awaits the ball at the 13-yard line. Nice and high and angled toward the right corner. That will go out of bounds. And we'll see if Josh Miller got it out of bounds inside the 20. Yes, he did. Bills hold, they get the ball back. Crowd doesn't like the spot. He came on to replace the injured Rob Johnson game five last year and only enhanced his legendary status. Doug Flutie had a wonderful year, fulfilled at last by his selection to the Pro Bowl. Modest numbers so far this season. Three and three in the touchdown and interception category. First and ten, Bills at their own 13-yard line. Well, fumble. A fumble in the opening play by Antoine Smith, and Pittsburgh has it. Only the fourth fumble lost thus far this season. And an early opportunity for an opportunistic Pittsburgh team. Well, Bill Cowher's decision to go ahead punt. Let's see if his d defense can make something happen. And never receiving the handoff from Flutie. Antoine Smith just lost it somewhere there in the exchange with his quarterback. Can't be that hard to execute a handoff between quarterback and running back. That's that's a bonehead mistake in your own territory. Levon Kirkland with the fumble recovery first down. And Cordell Stewart gives it to Jerome Bettis, who doesn't find much there. Bettis has struggled. He had an injury in preseason and uh, has yet to find the touchdown that has proven so elusive. He's yet to find a 100-yard game. Jerome had uh, knee surgery, uh, arthroscopic surgery, on August the 3rd. So obviously got very little done during training camp. Last week was the first time that they thought he was back to 100%. But the blocking up front, has not been what Steeler fans are used to seeing over the years. They are not dominating the line of scrimmage as in years past. Double tight end set. Courtney Hawkins near side. Hines Ward far side. And Stewart dancing back and then up the middle where they diagnosed that play immediately. He lost the yard. Gabe Northern, number 99, made the tackle. Yeah, Gabe Northern didn't commit upfield. He hung in there right at the line of scrimmage, and you know he's looking for Cordell to take off. Initially, it looks like it right there. See Northern number 99, how he doesn't overcommit upfield. He really held his ground, fluttered there around the line of scrimmage, looking for Stewart to make that move to the middle. Outstanding work. This linebacking crew of Buffalo, this could very well be as good as any linebacking group in the National Football League. Third and 10. Stewart pulls up, finds Hines Ward, touchdown. And what has to be an enormous sense of relief. Well, look at this start throwing the football for Cordell Stewart. Man coverage back in the end zone. Thomas Smith locked up on Hines Ward. But it's the threat of Stewart movement, just as we'll see when Buffalo has the ball, the threat of Flutie being on the move changes everything defensively the minute he leaves the pocket. He bought a little extra time. Ward stayed alive. 
Chris Brown for the extra point. Just inside the left upright on third and 10. Cordell Stewart finds Hines Ward. Quick touchdown by the Pittsburgh Steelers, and they will kick off for the second time. That is Kevin Gilbride on the left. He is the third offensive coordinator working with Cordell Stewart in as many years. Jan Gailey, very successful in Cordell's best year. Last year, the much beleaguered Ray Sherman, who took uh, a lot of the blame for the woes of the Steelers at the end. And Gilbride comes in as the third coordinator now in as many seasons. Here's Chris Brown's kick taken by Williams at the two. And Kevin Williams flying down the sideline looks for a place to run, and Chris Oldham knocks him out of bounds. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the touchdown pass to Heinz Ward. Here's Ward here. Here's Thomas Smith locked up. The key, the safety here, comes up and gets locked up in the middle, kind of in no man's land. No help to Thomas Smith whatsoever. Right there, you're out of the play. Thomas Smith is all by himself in his defensive ward. The movement by Cordell Stewart gives an F extra second to that offensive play. Thomas Smith really never even saw the ball coming in. See, just staying alive, just that little stutter step. Kurt Schultz, a safety up in the middle, can't get back to help out his corner. First down and 10, play fake, Flutie. Goes deep left side and makes the connection for Andre Reed, his 901st catch of a brilliant Hall of Fame destined career. It's those first 900 that are tough. <laughs> Fina Brown, Ostrowski Ziegler, and Robert Hicks, the offensive line. And the Bills have Antoine Smith and Sam Gash in the backfield. Reed molds the tight end is Jay Reemersma. Andre Reed, who was blanked last Monday night, that ended a streak of 36 consecutive games. He and Bruce Smith came in here and uh, just did get the first down. Andre Reed with 901 career catches now. You know, much in the same position as Jerry Rice in San Francisco, where he is not the A receiver anymore. That, of course, falls to Eric Mould, just as Terrell Owens has taken over that position in San Francisco. But Andre Reed, so tough across the middle. Not a team in this league that wouldn't like to have him. First down and 10, Buffalo. Andre Reed in motion. Jonathan Lip was in the one back set now, and there's another mix up. And Philly dances out of trouble. Oh, what a movie put on LeVon Kirkland. Well, Kirkland tackled air. Not only that, Vern, there were two Steelers that came right up the middle and blew right by Flutie like he wasn't even there. LeVon Kirkland was actually, here comes Earl Holmes, number 50. He's going to have a shot at Flutie as he goes by. There goes Gilden, 92. And finally, Kirkland. Three of the four Steeler linebackers have a shot at Doug Flutie. And finally, it takes Lee Flowers to get him down. Gain of nine, second down and one. Sheldon Jackson comes in as an extra tight end. Receivers are split to the left side. Here's Linton. He's got a first down and 10 across the field. Well, is Pittsburgh Steeler defense playing really well this season? Orpheus Roy replaces Nolan Harrison up front with Steve and Keevan Henry. The linebackers, you saw them all in the last play. Gildon, Kirkland, Holmes, and watch for Carlos Emmons to spy on Footy. Scott, Travis Davis, Lee Flowers, and Dwayne Washington in the secondary. First down and 10, three receivers set. That is Williams to the tight end. Here comes Gilden. Flutie flushed out to his right. Looks for Moles, can't find him, runs again out of bounds at the 40 yard line. Boy, and what a blitz pickup in the backfield by Jonathan Lint. That's that's why that whole play happens. Linton sitting in the backfield. Look right there. Here's his block. He picks up Gilden. Yeah, he gets his arms to the outside a little bit, but he just takes Gilden, moves him out of the way, and of course that creates the hole to the right. Doug's smart enough to realize that's where the void is. The blitzer from that side handled. That's the way you scramble. Sam Gash back in the lineup now with Antoine Smith as Linton the single back set. Replacing Thurman Thomas, who's on the uh, Injury list is on the handoff to Smith. This time he's able to hang on to it. And Travis Davis is up around the shoulders to make the tackle number 27. You have Thurman Thomas out with the bruised liver. Uh, he will be back and he will contribute for this Buffalo team, but obviously having some type of damage, and there is 
the great Thurman Thomas. Having that type of damage to an internal organ, you cannot be cautious enough. First down and 10. Thomas nearing the 12,000 yard mark for his terrific career. First and 10. Linton back in. Reed starts in motion. Play fake. Woody pulls up, wads it out. And Jackson is able to control it, but he bobbled it. Now let's check in with the third member of our commentary team, Ms. Bonnie Bernstein. Hi there, Vern. And talking with Steelers defensive coordinator Jim Hazlitt, we said, what do you need to do to contain Flutie? Because obviously that's priority one for the Steelers. He said, you know what? We picked up on one of his tendencies. More times than not, if Flutie rolls right, he's going to throw the ball. If he goes left, he's going to hand it off or tuck it and run. Although two times already we've seen Flutie run right. He is kind of the king of improvising, though, Vern. <laughs> yeah, that's it, Bonnie. Yet again, he flies in the face of convention. Blitz look for the Steelers now on second down. That's Molds in motion. Here comes the blitz. Linton tries to dance on the outside. And he got through before LeVon Kirkland made the tackle. But that's going to move the chain for Buffalo again. And that's one of the things about Jonathan Linton. He's kind of a tweener back. He's built more like a fullback. And he's got the power of a fullback. But he's got the feet of a running back, which we just saw on that uh, on that run right there. A nifty little move at the line of scrimmage to find, you know, stutter step over to his left, find the hole and take off. He's a, a very nice combination with Antoine Smith and a guy in just his second year going to be here for a while. Bills load up on the left side. Now Gash comes in motion to provide blocking help. And a play fake. Oh, what a nice block in the backfield by Smith. And the throw to Gash to the 20-yard line. Antoine Smith gave up his body to, to make that block and give Flutie time to throw it. And it was really a good fake, Vern, by Sam Gash, who fakes like he's blocking and then releases. Take a look at this. Front. There's Gash 33. See, he comes up like he's going to throw the block. It really, it really catches Lee Flowers there in no man's land. And Sam Gash just slides right on out and makes a, a relatively easy pickup. Second and six, ninth play of the drive. There's Gash again. Conventional high formation. And on the Smith, who squirts inside the 20 yard line and is down at the 19. Lee Flowers and LeVon Kirkland make the stop. You know, as an offensive lineman, that's something I always wanted to do. Yes. Squirt. <laughs> Only running backs get a chance right, to yeah, yeah. squirt up into the line. It was one of those, it's one of those descriptive. Now, yeah. you know, it just it never fits to a line. I would never associate the term squirt with number no. 72. No, I didn't squirt. No, I didn't squirt. No. I wish I could have. We always got stuck with the high top shoes and no squirt. One never knows what fantasies go through the mind. Third down. Here's Flutie. Got him. Eric Rhodes. Chad Scott there to make the tackle, but a first down Buffalo at the 10. Well, give Joe Pendry, the offensive coordinator of the Bills, a lot of credit. Everybody is touching the football on this drive. Just locked up on Chad Scott, who doesn't get much of a bump on Molds. Mold's able to get away from Scott, and uh, you've got to respect his big play ability. But Joe Pendry is spreading the football around on this drive. Eric Mold's had a breakout season last year, went to the Pro Bowl, had a disappointing first couple of years. Now Gash and Antoine Smith back in on first down, and it'll be Antoine Smith. Nothing there. Pittsburgh defense closing on that play quickly as Earl Holmes, number 50, made the tackle. A lengthy Buffalo drive, however, they have moved from their own 31 to a second down at the nine, trailing by seven. Vern, you and I were talking earlier about that performance by the Bills' defense on Monday night. You know something? The performance by Pittsburgh's defense last week in that game against Jacksonville, where their offense was showing no signs of life whatsoever. I, I thought Jim Haslett's crew turned in an awfully good, in fact, a stellar performance last week defensively. Jackson comes to the right. Flutie straight drop back. Good protection. Nobody open, so he'll scramble. Looks like a rerun. Throws it away. It'll be third down. Now, that just doesn't look like shades of Fran Tarkenton. 
that it, you're, you're scrambling, but the term scrambling makes it sound like you're not under control, like you're fighting for your life. Doug Flutie in this movement right here is just so completely under control. Nobody really came close to getting a piece of him. He's he's moving, but it's not movement that you would associate with panic. And he does oh bring a charisma to the field, doesn't he? He sure does. Third down. Peerless Price and Kevin Williams are in as extra wideouts. The shotgun. Here's Flutie back. Scrambles immediately. Now that might be panic. <laughs> The catch made at the one-yard line. Andre Reed. Carlos Emmons, number 51, drew a feed on Flutie. Yeah, this is a case where Flutie left the, pot, uh, the pocket because of panic. <laughs> he had no choice. It was either that or get trampled. All right, the pressure coming from the left side of the screen. Take a look at this right off the edge. Doug sees it and goes deep. Buys some time, buys his time, and here we go, breaking that tendency again, running to the left and throwing the football. Tough well, throw. I think Pittsburgh can take that tendency and throw it out the window. And look at Reed, look at Andre Reed, just sitting there, sitting there, making himself a target. A very veteran play by Andre Reed. In the meantime, they measured for the first down, and the Bills. Did not get it. It's fourth down. And Steve Christie is on the sideline. Smith and Gash behind Flutie. Three tight ends. Reamers must starts in motion. Play fake. Flutie. Drills it. Caught. Touchdown. Sam Gash. His first touchdown of 1999. Well, again. Formation. Sam Gash lined up with the fullback. Your first instinct is to think that he's going to be a blocker. And the Pittsburgh defense loses track of Gash. By the time Chad Scott can react, and then he sees Gash, and yet peels off of him and heads further back into the secondary. A good call by the Bills, but poorly executed defense by Pittsburgh. Turning the fullback loose in the end zone. The season out of Penn State, Sam Gash with his first touchdown catch of 1999. And that puts the uh, period to a 69-yard, 14-play drive and ties us up 7-7. Here's Steve Christie's second kickoff of the game. And Troy Edwards will drop the one knee, second touchback in as many kickoffs for Christie. So it comes out to the 20 and Cordell Stewart comes on. He's thrown a touchdown pass in the early going. And touchdown throws from both Doug Flutie and Cordell Stewart. Late first quarter. And here come the Steelers to take on the Buffalo defense. Will Blackwell leading the way as Bettis charges over right tackle down to the 22 yard line. John Holasek makes the tackle. Next Saturday, the Home Depot College football on CBS goes deep in the heart of the SEC. You'll see Sean Alexander lead the Crimson Tide against the Rebels of Ole Miss, and it begins with Tim Brando and Spencer Tillman on the Volkswagen College football today. A little rainstorm yesterday in Baton Rouge. A little rainstorm? <laughs> Looked like us in Jacksonville of a couple of weeks ago. Second down and seven. Deep handoff to Bettis. Yard still tough to come by. Sam Cowart, number 56, makes the tackle on Jerome Bettis. You can see both of these defenses that have been playing so well, both of them lit up early here. Very, very uncharacteristic. Through four games, Steelers allowing only three, the Bills four, and both of them giving up touchdowns and as we come to the end, uh, towards the end of the first quarter, that's uh, not normal. Third and five. And Stewart will operate out of the spread. Courtney Hawkins back in the backfield with him. Four-man rush, Smith coming from the outside. And it was not Smith who got there first. Looks like Sean Price, number 91. Well, that is what 
you'll hear defensive coordinators talking about a push up the middle. This is the pocket collapsing up the middle. Phil Hansen getting work inside. Sean Price in the middle. Price ends up with the sack. They had great pressure off the edges, but that was the pocket collapsing upon Cordell Stewart. Now Josh Miller is on to punt. Bruce Smith had excellent penetration that time. But it was Price who gets credit for the sack. We have reached the end of one at Ralph Wilson Stadium. Pittsburgh 7, Buffalo 7 will return to Orchard Park, New York, right after this message. In quarter with Pittsburgh and Buffalo notched at 7. Josh Miller on the punt for the second time. Bonnie Bernstein, Dan Deardorff, and Vern Lundquist from Orchard Park. Kevin Williams back to return the punt. On fourth down, Mike Schneck snaps it back. My oh, man. And here's Kevin Williams at the 35, circles back to his right, gets a clearing block, and then is knocked out of bounds as he gets up near the 40 yard line. Tackle made by Mike Schneck. My oh, man. I love his name. I'm sorry. Time call of Ted Washington getting a rest now while his offensive uh, mates are on the field. Third offensive set now for Flutie and the Bills. They fumbled on the first play from scrimmage. That led to a Pittsburgh touchdown when they drove 69 yards. Here's Flutie coming left and connecting with Eric Moulds at the 50-yard line, giving the 49, and it's right in front of Dwayne Washington. Now let's see what's going on elsewhere in the NFL. Back in New York, and here's Jim Nance. All right, Jim, 200 and what yards? 14 last week. It is fun to watch a healthy Terry Glenn yes. back in action. He's had those nagging injuries the last couple of years, and when he's healthy, he's as good as there is. First down and 10 across the 50. Here's Flutie with a play fake. Carlos Hammond's coming. Flutie goes deep for Moles. Hello. Got him in stride. Touchdown. Perfect throw, 49 yards. They whipped Chad Scott. Well, Chad Scott didn't play last year. He's got a reconstructed knee. He's making his comeback this year. And to be locked up one-on-one -on -one with a post pattern with no safety help whatsoever, I think you're putting Chad Scott in a position where most NFL cornerbacks are going to be beaten on that pattern by Eric Moulds. Without safety help, that's a 90% completion. Extra point from Christie is up and through. Jim Haslett said to us last night, the key for Pittsburgh, Eric Moulds against our cornerbacks. That one goes to Buffalo. Eric Moulds then has to go face the wrath of his head coach, Bill Cowher. Well, I'm assuming that Bill is saying something along the lines of, you know you have no inside help from the safeties. You just can't give away the middle of the field like that. But that's easier to talk about than it is to actually be the corner who has to cover molds. Here's Christie into the arms of Will Blackwell for the Steelers, and he's out across the 25 and the 27 yard line. Will Blackwell. Take another look at this 49-yard toss, Flutty to Moulds. Here's Eric Moulds right here. He just runs the post pattern, but watch how everyone else here is committed up front because of the patterns by Reed and by Reimersma. And again, I just can't emphasize enough that Eric Moulds, so gifted, without safety help to the inside, which is very late in coming, Chad Scott, that won't be the first of those he gives up today if they're going to leave him isolated on Moulds. First down, here's Stewart back, his team trailing now, and there's a one-hopper, and unfortunately, I'm sure fans in Pittsburgh are saying that looks like one of the passes we've seen in the last couple of weeks. Monday on CBS, Ray's guilty of letting sports get in the way of, well, you know, but is that his only problem? Ray's little secret is out, and everyone's going to know. You'll know, too, on an all-new Everybody Loves Raymond, Monday, right here on CBS. Well, there's Kevin Gilbride, the Pittsburgh offensive coordinator. He saw a pretty good first series, a very effective second series. But now they're starting to sputter again. There we go. The bus gets a little something. John Holosek makes the tackle. Doubleheader for you on CBS here in week five of the 99 season. And coming up 
in our game two. Most of you will see Miami at Indianapolis. Denver goes out on the coast to take on the Raiders, and Baltimore will be at Tennessee. Here is John Holosek, second year as a starter, number 52, and a brilliant game Monday night. He had a, a sack of Marino that resulted in a fumble recovery by Gabe Northern. That went for a touchdown, and then Holosek with an interception and a return of 35 yards. 35. Stewart, deep left side, and he had a man. He's got Troy Edwards for the first down. Well, a good job there, Vern, of Cordell Stewart identifying where the single coverage is on the field. And he spots it right at the top. And that is, uh, that's a good job. See, here's the lone coverage. Thomas Smith all by himself with Edwards. And Cordell Stewart nicely identifying that at the snap of the football. And let your receiver be the guy that makes the play. Underthrow it, throw it wherever you want, because he can make the adjustment. Number one draft pick this season from Louisiana Tech in a gain of 25. Here's Stewart across the middle. And it's dropped by Mitch Lyons. Tough catch. Mitch Lyons went up to uh, try and make the grab. Now, Bill Cowher saying last night, we need to get yardage in chunks. And he got a chunk on that uh, previous play. And what a coach means when he's talking about in chunks is, is that his offense isn't in sync to the point where he feels confident in their ability putting together 12 and 13 play drives. That's, uh, there's no doubt this Steeler offense is not to that point yet. Second down and 10. Here comes the blitz by Buffalo. Good blitz pickup and a diving drive by John Whitman as Thomas Smith went for the interception and came perilously close if you're a Pittsburgh fan. And uh, almost perfectly close if you're a Buffalo yes, fan. Yes, exactly right. Thomas Smith squatting on this pattern. He almost got it, but then again, Whitman almost got it as well. That was a, a real gamble by Thomas Smith. But did you notice how he had backup help behind him? He knew he had some safety help behind him. So even if he misses it and it's a completion, it doesn't go for big yardage. Third and 10, 12.36 to go in the second. The blitz coming. Quick flip out to Edwards. He tries to work his way toward the 40, and that's as far as he gets. It's Bruce Smith with the penetration. And uh, Kurt Schultz made the tackle. Schultz, who uh, put a couple of hits on uh, running backs and receivers Monday night. He took a couple shots. Uh, that first shot that he put on Rob Conrad, the rookie fullback for the Dolphins, uh, sent him to another zip code. <laughs> I don't, I'm not sure it did a whole lot for Kurt either. He was, <laughs> That's <laughs> right. He, he was looking a little dinged as well. I don't think he was ready to take his graduate <laughs> record exam uh, the next morning. Here's Josh Miller on the punt. Kevin Williams awaits it at the 10 yard line. Fair catch called by Williams. He takes it at the nine. 31 yard punt, nothing on the return. Time call. Buffalo, Doug Flutie off to a terrific start. He's eight of nine for 98 yards. Get inside the game with CBS Sports Lines Week 5 leaders and see today's leaders in passing, rushing, receiving, and kicking in real time. It's live now. Just click on NFL at cbs.sportsline.com. There's a handoff to Antoine Smith. And oh, fumbles. A second fumble for Smith. This one, oh, now no fumble, down by contact. Chad Scott, who is uh, trying to get back in Bill Cowher's good graces, made the contact on that play. Appears to have separated Mr. Scott from his helmet at the same time. All right, let's take a look at it. Behind Gash, here comes Antoine Smith. Good lick by Gash. And the official on the spot ruling that the ball was down by contact. The runner was down by contact. Second. So looked to me like the ball might have come out a little early. Yeah, I thought. Uh, Jonathan Linton. Across the 20 to 21, the for, the, for those of you at home and are thinking about replay, keep in mind now when a, when he's ruled down by contact, uh, that is not uh, anything that can be challenged. Right. So 
Uh, it's not uh, one of those deals that where the system works. Tuesday on CBS, if Harm thought it would, right side, wide open, Moles. Chance got somewhere there, expecting deep help, I would assume. Lee Flowers got there after a 29-yard gain. Well, it's he split the help. That's just a good work uh, between receiver and quarterback. Chad Scott know, knows he has Flowers deep, but you've got to close the gap more than that. It, you can't leave a 12 or a 14-yard window for Doug Flutie to drop that football into like he did right there. You're going to have cover, too. You've got to tighten it up on both ends of that coverage. Eric Bowles already with 96 yards on four catches. Linton back in the backfield now. Blitz coming. Flutie caught and drive. Joel Steed, number 93, and Earl Holmes, number 50, probably will share this sack. If it's given to one of them, it'll be big number 93. Now, if there's such a thing as a soft sack, this might be it. At least Doug uh, didn't take a, a really big hit. You can see he's tied up there. Holmes comes in. He'd like to really put something, but he's not used to having to aim at a target that low. 132 yards a game passing defense is just an extraordinary number. Well, it's about to uh, be expanded. Yes, it's <laughs> by Eric Mould yeah. himself. Orpheus Roy makes the tackle number 71, and that'll force a third down from the 40-yard line. Not a big fan of that slicing the throat uh, gesture after making a uh, nope. after making a play. Orpheus Roy just reading this thing, getting the penetration, and just smothering the ball carrier. Orpheus Roy in his fourth year from Florida State, and it's third and 20 now. 14-7 Buffalo. Flutie goes from the shotgun. And here's everybody on Pittsburgh moving around up front. See how many out they're going to bring to the corner. Scott comes. Flutie rushes. Oh, my gosh. He might have. Yes, he does have the first down. He needed 20. He got 21. Well, when you come with a blitz like this, what happens is everybody out there is locked up in man coverage, which means they've got their back to the quarterback. And if Doug Flutie gets out of the mess up front, it's really just a five-man rush. But look, everybody has their back turn to the original line of scrimmage. Doug Flutie is 12 or 14 yards downfield before anybody in the Steelers' secondary knows he's gone. Jim Haslett, the defensive coordinator, tried to confuse Flutie, and instead that uh, horrible sound for defensive backs and the crowd going crazy as they run down the field. Here's Antoine Smith. Well, you know, Vern, the best indication of a mobile quarterback is how many times a blitzer comes in unblocked and who doesn't get the sack. And Doug Flutie and, and Cordell Stewart, to a lesser degree, they make unblocked guys miss. And that is where your defensive scheme falls apart because you're counting on the unblocked guy to make the hit and make the sack. When he doesn't do it, all of a sudden now your entire defense is at risk. 21 on a need of 20 on third down. Play fake. Flutie chased by Holmes. Finds Reed. And Andre Reed cuts inside the 25 out of bounds at the 21-yard line. First and 10, Buffalo. Gain of 14. Well, this is a design rollout off of the play fake to the left side. Watch Doug. He'll make the fake right here. And this is a design play all the way. Gilden is unblocked, but he's in no man's land. No way he's going to get upfield quick enough. And Andre Reed coming clear across the formation wide open. Remember yeah. that average of 132 yards per game? Yeah, it, it's, you're right. That's going to go up in smoke here for Sam. Flutie yeah. is now 10 of 11 for 141. And he'll go from the spread again. Four man Pittsburgh rush. Flutie comes left wide open. Andre Reed at the 11 yard line. Dwayne Washington wraps him up. Vern, we might be seeing a little. Sorry about last week, Andre, where you didn't get a catch. This is how about if we make it up to you this week and we'll we'll make you a bigger part of the game. Uh, we were chatting with Wade uh, Phillips yesterday. Said Andre said he wants the ball more. And Wade said, I want Andre to have the ball more. Hey, the speed is not there like it used to be. That's no surprise to anybody when it's your 15th year in the league. The savvy is still there and the hands are still there. 
which shows there's more to getting open than just running back. Blitz coming, and on left side to the 10 yard line. Smith, the ball carrier. Tackle by Travis Davis on Antoine Smith. 5.45 before the halftime break. Andre Reed trails only Jerry Rice and Art Monk with uh, 900 or more receptions. Of course, Jerry Rice over 1,000 and nearing the end of a brilliant 15-year career. Third and one. Play fake. Moody chased by Flowers and Lee Flowers. Gets him before he gets the first down. Rudy on the keeper. Lee Flowers came back from a high ankle sprain. He was told he might miss six weeks. He missed one. Yeah, that's uh, it was some comeback when he came back and played last week. See, now normally in this situation, Doug is running from a linebacker or a defensive end, and normally he's able to pull that off. But now he's got a safety chasing him in the backfield, and, and Doug, even with his fine speed, not that fast. Steve Christie on for the attempted field goal, 29 yards. He is closing on on 1,000 points in a stellar career. That's his fifth point today and gives him 998 for his career. Buffalo's lead is now 10. 4.31 to go before the break, and Steve Christie getting set to kick off. Blackwell and Troy Edwards. That's Will Blackwell, number 89. Wait the kick. Pittsburgh scored first, and here's Blackwell on one hop at the 20-yard line, 25, and brought down as he gets to the 29-yard line. 17-7. Cordell Stewart comes on the field when we come back to Orchard Park. Orchard Park, New York, Ralph Wilson Stadium. We're about a half an hour drive south of Niagara Falls here in Orchard Park. We came in talking defense, but this Buffalo offense has been spectacular so far. Yeah, they really have. And uh, moving the ball better against the uh, Pittsburgh defensively than we've seen in a while. Uh, right now, though, on the road down, uh, the, the, the critical thing for Cordell right now in the Steeler offense room, they just can't now afford a mistake. A turnover now is the type of thing that can break a game open when you're on the road and behind. Here's Stewart to throw on first down, going deep for Will Blackwell, and it's man-to-man -man with Ken Irvin, incidental contact, and uh, they took a shot. Let's check in with Bonnie Bernstein. All right, Vern, what we're seeing today is a much more confident quarterback in Cordell Stewart, probably in large part because offensive coordinator Kevin Gilbrine has pared down the playbook. See, their offense is predicated on the guys going to the line, reading the defense, and then deciding what route they're going to run. Now, instead of having multiple routes, the receivers have one or two, and Gilbride told us Cordell had his best week of practice yet, Vern. All right, here's a handoff to the bus, and he gets a couple. Dan Rooney, the, uh, the the affable owner of the Pittsburgh Steelers, came by last night as we were meeting with uh, some of the players and coaching staff. He was very gracious to come by, and it's been a little tough in Pittsburgh. And he walked in, and he said, I want you to know that we've had an excellent week of practice, and Cordell Stewart has been throwing the ball deep. Well, he just did. And see if they do it again. Unfortunately, he threw it deep to a guy who was extremely well covered. Yes, that's quite true. Very observant. Thank you. It's called color analysis. Astute as well. Here's the flip to Huntley. He's got blocking him. Dermonte Dawson, who is starting his 169th consecutive game. The all-pro center was downfield to help lay a block. A well-executed screen to the left. The center is always the guy you count on to make the key block. The left guard goes. That's Roger Duffy. Here comes Dawson. And right here, it looks like this is going for huge yardage until Huntley trips over his own guy. Now there, you know, that was, should have gone for more. He trips over the legs of his center. Dawson. Jerome Bettis setting to the left and getting a couple. Indianapolis Colt running back Edron James is off to a fast start. Log on to NFL.com and find out what makes this rookie go. Second down eight as we near the two-minute warning, a 17-7 ball game. 
And the yards uh, still difficult to come by for Jerome Bettis. 19 on eight carries today. Wentz, Buffalo. Cordell Stewart, Hines Ward. But right short of the first down at the 45 yard line, Ken Irvin, number 27, tested often for Monday night, makes the tackle. NASDAQ halftime report shortly. Jim Craig, Randy, and Jerry scores and highlights in the preview of the Miami Indianapolis game that will be the featured game in the second half of our doubleheader. Conversions thus far. And uh, the comparison between the two signal callers thus far, modest numbers, but successful numbers for Cordell Stewart, but uh, Doug Flutie having a, a terrific. Yeah, with only one incomplete pass, a couple of touchdowns and beautiful touchdown passes. That, that long play to mold, so that's, that's just the kind of stuff that even the novice football fan looks at that and goes, you know, that's why I like this game. Flutie has run three times in the ball game. Cordell Stewart yet to tuck it and run third and three out of the shotgun shovel pass and it's successful as Richard Huntley gets it down to the 35 yard line Manny Martin number 21 made the tackle but a conversion for the Steelers a gain of 11 and a good looking shovel pass that was but again it's a threat of Cordell running which to this point in time is a career threat it's not a threat because of anything he's done today. Pittsburgh has three timeouts remaining and uh, Steelers use one Buffalo calls time thank your part Probably got this at the Elvis auction the other night. Let's go, you Looking feel? more like Elvis Costello. <laughs> First and ten at the 35. Last time out, charged to Buffalo. Here's the draw play to Huntley. They'll test the middle inside the 30 to the 27 yard line. Now here's where Pittsburgh has to get to the line of scrimmage. Sure, they called two plays in the huddle. But Cordell, this is the type of situation where Cordell Stewart, if he takes off with the football, has a chance to really make something happen. Second down and three. Finds a receiver. It's Will Blackwell inside the 17. That's good for a first down. Gain of 10. Stewart back. Pulls up, lets it go in the end zone. Tip by touchdown. Troy Edwards, thank you very much, Thomas Smith. Ooh, Corth, that is that is so close to being an interception, but it just it was a wonderful job of Smith initially getting a hand on the football, but not to knock it straight up in the air. You don't uh, they don't hand out assists in this game. If they did, Thomas Smith would get one on that. Chris Brown on for the extra point. Mike Tomzak with the hole. The extra point is up and good. And Cordell Stewart and Troy Edwards collaborate for a 17-yard touchdown. Pittsburgh. This is the half of football that everybody who loves the Steelers has been hoping Cordell Stewart would have. Starts up front, look at the protection, gets a great look at the field. He just leaves because he's trying to find an open guy. When Thomas Smith, who was in the air and not able to react back to it, just flips it right to Edwards. Again, brought about by the movement and the blocking. Cordell Stewart's movement and his offensive line's blocking. And right about there, when he tips that thing up into the air, is when Thomas Smith knows that he's in big trouble. Now, Cordell Stewart chatting with us last night said he, he has been agitated by the reception he's been given at home. It's been very difficult. And uh, looking forward to coming on the road and getting away from a lot of the agitation and playing well. And so far here in the first half, he's done exactly that. Well, the Steelers, Vern, just not able to win at home. Well, losing to Seattle, losing to Jacksonville, and their skid goes all the way back into last season. 
There's a strip kick, and it's taken at the 30-yard line. Bobby Collins, number 84, was there to grab it. NASDAQ halftime coming up in uh, 48 seconds. That would be Nance, James, Cross, and Glanville reading from left to right. The NASDAQ halftime report. How come one weekend that Glanville guy is like real tall, and next week he's he's like way down there? But does he have some kind of a hydraulic thing on that set where they raise him and lower him? Is there something about like a Broadway box, show where he soapbox here? Yeah, it's like uh, I don't know. It's, it's like he's on some movable stage. Well, he's been terrific on first down. Perfect, as a matter of fact. First and ten with 48 seconds to go. Bills have two timeouts left. Flutie across the middle, deep for Moulds, incomplete. That time, Chris Oldham got back, and now a flag, as somebody may have leveled Eric Moulds after the pass went through. Well, he makes contact with Lee Flowers. Lee Flowers was really playing center field. No, you're not going to call it on Flowers. I bet you that this thing... I bet you this thing is going to be called him against uh, Travis Personal Davis. Ball, unnecessary roughness defense, number 27. Yep. Hitting a player after the ball had passed. Yeah, when you're, at, penalty, when you're looking down. at it at full speed, you see Flowers hit the ground, but from behind, right here, there's the shove by Travis Davis. And again, the NFL is going to great lengths. Watch 27 right there from behind. He takes a shot on Eric Molds. When everybody in the stadium can see the ball is just bouncing around on the field. And actually his shot knocks molds into his own guy, Lee Flowers, who gets up late taking a look at that bad ankle for him. Not the same as an interference call. The ball moved out to the 50-yard line. First down and 10. Here's Woody. Chased by Carlos Emmons. And he drags him down inbounds. Wow, that's the key. Yep. Timeout. Buffalo uses its second. They've got one left. 30 seconds to go first half. Timeout. Bill Coward called Travis Davis and Lee Flowers over, Dan. I think he was talking about the middle of the field and number 80 <laughs> for the Buffalo Bills. Something along the lines of Eric Moulds running a post pattern. And you two, my two safeties, cannot allow it to happen. Moulds comes near side with Andre Reid. Jim Hazard, the defensive coordinator, looks on. Second down. Five wideouts and an empty back. Flutie behind the intended receiver, Peerless Price, incomplete. Shea Townsend was there defending, number 26. Peerless Price, our second round draft choice this year out of Tennessee. I remember him off of their national championship team. He's only got four receptions on the year, and he would have liked a, a better throw from his quarterback that time to go for number five. Ball well behind him where he didn't have much of a chance. Pittsburgh employing six defensive backs now, third and six with 26 seconds to go before the break. Flutie again will go with the spread. Steelers. Flutie goes right. Catch is made by Moles on the out pattern inside the 40 in front of Deshae Townsend. That's a gain of eight and a first down. Well, in this situation, you still have enough time on the clock that you can afford to work a sideline. If they're going to give you that big of a cushion. And the replay official. Uh, under whose control the replay system is now entrusted in the final two minutes is calling for a review of that last play. So well, two things will come into play here. One will be his feet, whether they were both inbounds, and second will be control of the football. Did he have control of the football? Well, he certainly has control of the football. Another look at it from this angle. The ball's not being juggled. The only question that could be coming into play is whether his left foot tickled the white over there on the sidelines. Let's take a look at it here. 
No, that's a reception. Yep. And that's how it was ruled on the field. And I don't know how the official could be in a much better spot than he was right there. But imagine that hockey league's going to say the play stands. Well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You would never know. I would imagine. After reviewing the play, the pass is complete at the sidelines. Both feet were down inbounds. Results in a first down. Now, in my mind, uh, I just, I'm trying to figure out what they possibly could have seen mm -hmm. in the replay booth that, that warranted being sent down for Ed Hockey Lee to take a look at. That, that appeared to me to be an awfully clean catch from every single vantage point. And it results in a first down and 10 with 21 seconds to go. Bills will go with four wideouts. Moles goes right against Deshea Townsend. So Buffalo still has a timeout left, so they still can use the entire field. They're not restricted to the sideline. Flutie gets protection. Finds Reed. Got it at the 18. Just like that. Timeout. A gain of 20. And now Doug can take a shot at the end zone as well. Even though they have no timeouts remaining, Joe Pendry can take a shot into the end zone for an attempt to get six. You can't take a chance anyplace else because I'm not sure you'll be able to get up to the football and get it stopped in time. Almost certainly you can't. Andre Reed has now passed Art Monk in terms of all-time yardage in a career. Acknowledging the quarter to the crowd. Fifth most in NFL history. He needed 48. He's got 61 on five catches today. So third in the number of receptions, fifth in total yardage. And I think someday he's going to join you in the Hall of Fame. Why, well, it's a lock. It is a lock. And, of course, he's being coached by a Hall of Famer. Charlie Joyner is the wide receiver coach here in in Buffalo and I was proud to go into the Hall of Fame with Charlie as one of my classmates. Joyner's got a pretty good job here working with Andre Reed and Eric Moulds and now he's got an up and coming in peerless price. Right. Well. First down and 10. 14 seconds to go. Three man rush. They drop eight and the pass over Eric Moulds on the near side of field. Yeah, you're really limited in what you could do in this situation. And there is the great Charlie Joyner. When he retired after that wonderful NFL career, he led the league. His 750 career receptions were the best ever in NFL history. And uh, he's a, a fine football coach. At, uh, his next position, Vern, I would think, would be somebody's offensive coordinator, and who knows where it goes from there. 36-yard effort for Steve Christie. And with that kick, wide right. Boy, those words have uh, enormous impact here in Buffalo. Wide right. That's why I threw you a softball like that, Vern. Steve Christie just had the blade open at impact <laughs> and pushed it out of bounds. Well, somewhere and Scott Norwood is watching and saying mine was a little more serious than yours. Well, and it was uh, certainly farther. Norwood's was 47 yards, but the uh, the miss, the distance of the miss was about exactly the same. That's about how close Norwood's kick was in Super Bowl 25. That uh, had the Super Bowl won by the New York Giants. We played half. And it's a good one. Buffalo leading 17-14. A chance to extend that lead to six points. Cordell Stewart and Bill Cower, I'm sure, much, much uh, happier at this juncture of this game than they were a week ago at home against Jacksonville. And let's check in with Bonnie Bernstein, who's with the Buffalo head coach. 17-14, Buffalo by three. Buffalo 17-14 the lead. They have the only turnover in the ball game. They have moved the ball very, very well, but 
uh, Pittsburgh with no turnovers so far. No, and it's really been a strong performance by Cordell Stewart. It's uh, for those of you that haven't been following Pittsburgh, it's really almost impossible to describe how much fire this guy has been under and what a good half. And let's go ahead and take a look at the at the halftime numbers. Now, if there's one thing uh, that sticks out that's a troublesome spot for Pittsburgh, it's only having 28 rushing yards uh, in the first half. Uh, with their vaunted running game with the uh, with Jerome Bettis Burn, that's not going to cut it. They're going to they're going to have to do better on the ground here in the second half to give Cordell a little more room to operate. But a very productive half for Cordell Stewart with only four incomplete passes and two touchdowns, no interceptions, and uh, Pittsburgh will kick off to Buffalo to open the second half. They trail by three. Here's Chris Brown and Kevin Williams gathers it in at the seven yard line. Williams gets by Lee Flowers and then is down at the 26 yard line. Let's check in with Bonnie Bernstein. All right, Bern, Bill Cower is ecstatic with the way Cordell Stewart's playing. And he said, you know what? I think the best thing for him today has been to sit back and watch Doug Flutie make plays. On defense, I said, Coach, Eric Moulds is killing you. What are you going to do? Do you roll the safeties over? He looked at me and said, oh, yeah, we're going to do it, Bern. All right, Bonnie. Bill Cower chatting with us last night about Cordell Stewart. I think most of you know he was, uh, he was given a contract extension. Uh, in the offseason after a really tough year a year ago and Dan Rooney called Cordell and said we'd like to extend your contract three additional years. Cordell said it was a great reaffirmation of their belief in him. Here's Flutie. Pulling up, firing, caught by Jay Reemersma. And Reemersma does a nice job of getting open at the 40 yard line, a 14 yard gain. And that is his first catch today. Doug Flutie is so effective on the move because of all his little starts and stops. He's going to hit a spot here where it's going to look like he's going to go. Then he came back and then he decided to throw them. But it freezes the defense. It freezes the one guy that's responsible for co containing Doug. He's got so many little subtle nuances when he's on the move, Vern. Little shoulder turns, little fakes, little jump starts. It really does, it really does freeze the guys in front of him. First down and 10. Play fake. Across the middle, Reamer's not incomplete this time. Flutie had him and he knew it. Well, Doug Flutie with a brilliant first half and leading his team to a three point halftime lead. Made LeVon Kirkland miss on that play. Out of bounds with that run. And then 21 yards on a third and 20 for the first down. But that's the experience, especially on that last one, Vern, of realizing he spotted man coverage right away and said to himself, if I get out of the pocket, I know I've got a good 20 yards. Andre Reed in motion to the right. Here comes the blitz. A handoff. Jonathan with 85. Lee Flowers, number 41, was there to make the tackle. It'll be third down. Linton, I guess, deciding that he wasn't hit hard enough, got back up so he could get pummeled again. <laughs> <laughs> Lee Flowers, a strong safety, is supposed to be a hitter. Now watch this hit. That is a good shot by Lee Flowers. And I guess Linton, feeling that maybe that wasn't good enough, gets back up and lets somebody else take a shot at it. Showing an unexpected masochistic streak. <laughs> and it's third down and eight. Four wide receivers in now. The so-called empty backfield for the Buffalo Bills. Rush three, drop eight. Here's Flutie, right side, Reemersma, almost picked off. Chris Olman had both hands on it. Reemersma was open. Not quite enough loft on the ball that'll be pulled yeah, out. That's the old expression, not quite enough air underneath the football. Doug needed to loft that over the top of Oldham. And Chris Moore's first punt today, he will punt it away to Troy Edwards. The first round draft pick. Here's Chris Moore, veteran from Alabama, now in his 10th season. And Troy Edwards in his first, nice and high. And Edwards surprisingly lets that bounce at the 20. Brings to mind a conversation we had with Troy Edwards last night. Said, I don't think I'm a very good punt returner. Well, he looked out right there. You've got to handle that football. Troy Edwards and the Steelers, very lucky. Steelers have the ball for the first time in the third quarter. Ted Cottrell, who designed that brilliant defensive scheme against Miami on Monday night. 
putting his troops back on the field now to face Cordell Stewart. And what he hasn't had to face is Cordell running. Right. There's another completion for Stewart. Heaves it out on the right side. The catch made by Courtney Hawkins, number 88. Uh, Chris Moore punted a moment ago, and uh, special teams play away from the ball often very significant. Darrell Porter is the wide out for Buffalo, and Townsend uh, working him over, Simmons working him over. To be that sprinter on the punt team, that is a job for which no one applies. You've got to be drafted for that position. <laughs> I don't, nobody raises their hand when the, the special team coach goes, hey, who'd like to uh, be the sprinter on the punt team? Second down and seven. And Jerome Bettis carries it out. And Courtney Hawkins getting into a little squabble with Thomas Smith on the near side. Doesn't amount to anything. Wide receivers and cornerbacks. That's, that's like a brawl in baseball. You know, that's a, a lot of pushy, shovey. I'll grab you, you grab me. And let's right. Stay out of the middle of this. Thing. I think the Walter Foxtrot both come to mind. Rumba, no. <laughs> Third and three. Richard Huntley is back in the lineup. Third down three in a three-point game. Blitz. Stewart right side. Timing pattern incomplete intended for Troy Edwards. And it'll be fourth down. Good blocking up front by the Steeler offensive line. Cordell had all the time in the world to sur survey the field. And the great Bruce Smith starts out over there at right defensive end, running a line stunt. Called that an ISO in the old days where he went behind two of his down linemen. But there's so much time in that stunt running parallel to the line of scrimmage that it's really tough to get back into it. It's hard to turn your shoulders and get back upfield and get in the quarterback's face. Here's a flag down, and uh, this will be brought back. Before the snap, ball start, offense, number 23, five-yard penalty, and still fourth down. With Jason Simmons. At least he made the mistake before the ball was punted, and his teammates didn't have to sprint 50 yards downfield. So when you make a mistake after that 50-yard sprint, that you have to do it again where you get those cross looks from your teammates. Now he'll just get it from Bill Cowan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is that Mike Schneck? That is Mike Schneck. I was waiting for you to uh, jump on A badger. A badger. Schneck the badger. Badger's one. Bear catch. Kevin Williams. 36-yard line. Andre Reed. Jerry Ostrowski. Head out for... Their possession of the ball, Buffalo by three. By three, 17-14, first down 10 at the 37-yard uh, line. Coming up in the second half of our doubleheader, Miami at Indianapolis. Denver at Oakland or Baltimore at Tennessee. Doug Flutie and the Bills leading by three with a first and 10. And off to Antoine Smith. Cuts quickly to his right. The 40. Chad Scott makes the tackle, number 30. Well, let's go back and uh, watch the effort on the previous punt by Josh Miller. Well, remember, 23, Jason Simmons was one of the defenders on the last punt. He was handing it out. Now it's his turn to take it. He's having a battle, Thomas Smith. The mistake here, Henry Jones, number 20. Boy, when he, he should have caught him, bang, right when he comes back inbounds, instead of giving him a free run like that. That's... Uh, but it's, you know, uh, uh, you're either the giver or the receiver on that uh, punting situation. Second down and four, Bills. Uh, handed off to Linton, who can't find anything. Uh, they only to the 45-yard line. Lee Flowers, number 41, makes the tackle. Friday on CBS, critics say now and again may turn out to be the season's best. See what happens on the next all-new Now and Again Friday on CBS. Flutie and the Bills, third down and three with a three-point edge, 10-25 to go, third quarter. Home team has won the last 11 of these games. Well, only one running back in the backfield, Doug Flutie. Yep. <laughs> Four wide receivers, Reed, bottom of the screen. Five-man rush by Pittsburgh and a quick out. 
release to Reimersma. And good defense. <laughs> Look at Lee Lee Flowers. Yep. Please, no flag. Flowers was all over Reimersma, and he puts his hands together in a little prayer sitting down on the field, kind of out of his peripheral vision, hoping he doesn't see a hanky come flying in. And that's going to bring on Chris Moore for his second punt and send Troy Edwards back. Edwards said he did return punts at Louisiana Tech, but he found it much more difficult in the NFL, and it's not something he really uh, cares to do, but he's uh, he'll do it as called upon now. Let's this one go, and it does go into the end zone for a touchback. 56-yard punt. And it'll come out to the 20. 9.54 to go, third quarter. 9.54 to go in the third. Tonight on 60 Minutes, even after a bank robber shot several cops and civilians before being wounded by police, would the LAPD let him bleed to death in the street? The robber's family thinks so. That story and more on 60 Minutes tonight. First and 10, draw play. Stewart again, the door closed. The bus has been immobile today. Sam Cowart, number 56. Well, Bill Cower said that he's dividing this season into segments. They've completed the first quarter, and he's looking at the next six games. And look at this schedule. At Cincinnati, Atlanta, they can beat open. Uh, then at San Francisco, Cleveland, Tennessee, and Cincinnati. Gower is saying if we can sneak one today, they're right back in the middle of things in a conference in which no team is going to uh, establish domination over the period early. Here's Huntley. I mean, nobody's jumped out of the pack. I know New England is undefeated so far, but uh, parity and salary caps. Yeah, really. And of course, in the uh, when you're in the AFC Central, uh, because it's now a division with six teams in it, you play an awful lot of division games in the AFC Central. And of course, some of them, two of them are against Cleveland, two of them are against Cincinnati. Take a look at that right there. Baltimore uh, uh, doing pretty well under Brian Billick, a first-year head coach. But you do get a couple of passes with Cincinnati and Cleveland. Third and nine, stunts by the Bills. That pass off the hands of Troy Edwards. Ken Irvin defending, but Edwards should have had that one. Boy, the ricochet of that ball might have gone farther than the original yeah. pass. Just a quick slant to the inside. And uh, Troy Edwards got both hands on it, but he didn't come anywhere close to catching that. Bruce Smith, that's Wayne Gandy, number 72. But to nobody's surprise, Alan Fanica working the guard position inside ends up being a double team, something Bruce Smith has seen virtually every pass rush of his career. Josh Miller on to punt. Kevin Williams waits at the 37, so Buffalo should come out of this with good field position. This one not terribly high. Williams grabs it at the 37 and is down as he gets to the 43-yard line. It has been a wrestling match here in the third quarter. We're left with 8:21 remaining in the third. で生かしたいですね。そうですよね。まあしかしでもピッツバーグのオフェンスもなんか単調でですね。単調ですね。あのファーストのセカンドはまあランプレー。はい。Back at Ralph Wilson Stadium in Orchard Park, first down and 10 at the 44-yard line, Doug Flutie. And the Bills leading by three. Best starting field position today. Jonathan Linton in the backfield. Flutie will throw on first down. Finds Reimers, and he evades a tackle and gets out across the 50. And down at the 47. Reimers, a former Michigan quarterback. Yeah, and yesterday, Doug Flutie very glowing in his praise of Jay Reimersma, saying he is the best he's ever had in his career at finding a soft spot in knowing where to sit down, where to become a target. Of course, that the simplest pattern in the world a tight end can run. But he said, I've never worked with anyone as instinctive as Jay as far as finding a hole, finding some place to, to make himself open and to let me see him. That's that's a pretty good stuff. Flute. Second down, here's the pass to Cal. His third catch. He's got a touchdown grab. It came on fourth and one in the first half. And Travis Davis with the tackle. Sam Gash. Well, it's apparent, Vern, that, that 
Joe Pendry is making Sam Gash a much bigger part of the passing game than in years past. Last year here in Buffalo, when Sam went to the Pro Bowl as the AFC fullback, he only had 19 receptions on the entire year. And there he is with three already today, 10 on the year. So it's apparent that Joe Pendry said, hey, I've got a, uh, I've got a weapon here, and maybe I didn't utilize him enough in our passing game. First down and 10 at the 40. Here's Flutie. In between Chad Scott and Lee Flowers. Now Lee Flowers is going to have a little chat with uh, Eric Moulds. Yeah, of course, he's a safety talking to Eric Moulds. I'm sure Chad Scott really appreciates <laughs> Lee Flowers talking some snack to Eric Moulds. Eric Moulds will take it out on Chad Scott. And Lee, Lee Flowers will go, hey, I... Chad Scott looked back and said, oh, man. Oh, I know. <laughs> Playing next to Dobler all those years. He said, I said, talk to your guy. Don't ever talk to my guy. <laughs> Let my guy alone. Second down and 10. And Winton, or uh, Antoine Smith, it is, and LeVon Curtin is right there. That was uh, what, what they would call a slow, devel a slowly developing play. Well, that's or right. a slow developing play. And it wasn't blocked well at the point of attack. And Earl Holmes and LeVon Kirkland, the two inside linebackers for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Just prototypes now of what you're looking for. Big, active, now big, not a good word. Huge, huge. Holmes at 250 and Kirkland at 270. It's almost not fair the guys with that size can have that kind of mobility. Right. Four wide receiver set, Flutie in the shotgun on third and 11. Reed, top of the screen. Four man rush, the rush coming from the corner, Jason Simmons. The pass is incomplete at the 25. Well, this time, Jim Haslett brought Jason Simmons off the corner, and he got to Flutie about the time the delivery was made. Jason Simmons, we got him covering a punt, we got him blocking on a punt, and now he gets to come on uh, on a corner blitz. Well, you don't deliver it much better than that. It was just a really good football play by Chris Oldham coming across from the other side that got a hand on it, deflected it just enough that Reamers were good catch. Oh, Chris Olin got through and uh, had to pull up to let Moore punt it deep. And this one backs up on Buffalo. Now it takes a reverse pass. Oh, baby. Oh, 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 oh. That's why they make that thing pointy on both ends. <laughs> yeah, Chris Moore is a very avid golfer. He had the 60-degree wedge that time. 6.07 to go in the third. Buffalo holds a three-point edge, and they have pinned Pittsburgh Back at the six-yard line. Really a good series, though, for Pittsburgh uh, defensively there, Vern. Starting at the 44-yard line for Buffalo, and they didn't, didn't give them anything. Last week, Cordell Stewart threw for 126 yards, had the one interception, and he also fumbled three times. Much better figures today. Um, great passing game. I'm just trying to think if I've ever covered a Steelers game that saw less of Cordell Stewart running the football. He hasn't, he hasn't taken off with it once today. John Whitman, there's a quick setup, and they flip it out to the right side. It's caught by Heinz Ward, and he's loose out across the 25. How about that call? How about that call? And how about the execution? Yes, Kevin Gilbride gets uh, kudos for the call, but outstanding blocking by everybody up front. And look at the hustle by the Steelers getting downfield. There's the main block right there, but look at the block downfield. Dermonte Dawson gets a hit. No, that was just one well-executed football play. And Alan Fanica with a big uh, block as well, a gain of 24. The handoff to Bettis, and Bettis is spilled as he gets to the 33-yard line. Monday on CBS, an all-new night of the best comedy on television, beginning with The King of Queens, starring Kevin James and Jerry Stiller. That's followed by the new hit comedy, Ladies Man. Then Monday's number one comedy, Everybody Loves Raymond. Ray's got a secret that everyone's going to find out. And Ted Dance lineup on CBS. All new episodes, too, Vern. Yes, uh, thank you, Dan. That's a, don't you? Oh! Don't you do that entire thing. Well done, promo. Flags right. down. And Cordell Stewart hit as he lets it go. Bruce Smith has sacked 59 quarterbacks in his brilliant career. He's never sacked Cordell Stewart. Uh, he would make him number 60 if he were to accomplish that before the day's out. But this time, we may have 
offside. And it might be on that man. A double dip. Well, offsides and interference. Where was the interference? Because certainly it's a much bigger penalty than the five yards for the offsides. There were two fouls by the defense on the play. Offside, defense, number 78. By the way, penalty is declined. There was also pass interference, defense number 28. That penalty is accepted. Automatic first down at the spot of the foul. The flag on uh, Thomas Smith was thrown over near the Pittsburgh bench at the 48-yard line. Wade Phillips with a look of disbelief. <laughs> Bill Cowher's trying to help out a little bit. I think th did he change it to holding? Because Instead of interference. Yeah, because right. unless the ball is thrown in that direction, you, you right. must interfere with the thrown football. If it's away from the play, it's, it's just defensive holding. That is what they did, Dan. It's a five-yard penalty and a first down Pittsburgh at the 41. Jerome Bettis back in the lineup. Play fake. Left side, Hans Ward. And he is popped by Thomas Smith, and he turns around and talks a little smack. That's uh, a 13-yard gain on the play fake by Cordell Stewart. Now what a deep drop. Cordell Stewart ends up throwing this football from probably 12 or 13 yards from the line of scrimmage. That's how effective he Now that is a deep drop. That's really carrying out the play action. And he sold it, obviously, because Hines Ward open on the other side. This time they give the ball to Bettis. He comes left. Caught and dropped as he gets to the 44 yard line. Let's go back to New York and check in with Jim Nance. Kansas City up over New England. Boy, good second effort on that touchdown run there by Bennett. Second down and nine here. Pittsburgh has moved from its own six to a second and nine at the Buffalo 44. Good protection for Stewart. Goes right. It's intercepted. Picked off by Sam Rogers. And Rogers, number 59, rumbles to the 40 and down at the 38. His first interception of the season. Right into traffic. Cordell, who's done a good job so far this game, reading the coverages, trying to find the guy with single coverage. This time throws right into the thick of it. And Sam Rogers just alertly sitting on the inside. And uh, Lance Barrow down in the truck telling us his first career interception for Sam Rogers. And thus, he is keeping that ball. <laughs> Six-year man from yeah. Colorado. Flips it to the equipment guy and said, would you please hold that for me? That's destined for the mantle place. First and ten. That is the first Pittsburgh turnover of the day. Here comes the run blitz and Jonathan Linton down at the 34-yard line. Now let's check in with Bonnie Bernstein. All right, Vern, we were talking to Ted Washington before the game, and of course you always want to win, but the Bills' defense has a little bit more incentive. Washington distinctly remembers the last time these two teams played playoff game in 96 when Bill Cowher said his defense was the best in the league, and he called the Bills' defense soft. Ted Washington never forgot that, and he's been looking forward all day to some heavy hits in the trenches. All right, Bonnie, second down and five. And off Jonathan Linton. As he comes right and he gets to the 40 yard line, Lee Flowers cut him. Well, Bonnie was talking about Ted Washington, and, and there were a series of Buffalo Pittsburgh games, the last three of which have been played in Pittsburgh, and they were pretty much massacres. Uh, Pittsburgh just completely dominated Buffalo, and Ted didn't appreciate uh, the fact that, in his estimation, Bill Cowher was saying, hey, you know, we're just physically a tougher team than Buffalo. Those words, uh, those words, the kind of words that hang around for a long time. Third and one officially. Flutie hands it off to Linton, and he dives over left tackle. Picks up the first down. Travis Davis gets it. John Fina and Ruben Brown with the blocking help on this left, that left side. Ted Washington 
was uh, chatting with us yesterday morning about his appearance in the Pro Bowl. He and Reuben Brown, where the coach was Bill Cowher. Yeah, Bill Cowher was the, uh, the Pro Bowl coach of the AFC, and Ted said, we did not have any uh, in-depth discussions. We did not have any feel-good moments. Said, as a matter of fact, Sam and I were there, and, you know, he would say things to us, and we would just kind of look the other way, and we, uh, he so didn't want any part of it. Soft players don't do that. Yeah, it's, uh, now, if he played for Bill Cowher, that's another thing, but, uh, and I will, you know, I'm going to go out on a limb here, Vern, and, I think when Bill Cowher was maybe talking soft, he certainly wasn't talking about Ted Washington. No. <laughs> well, fourth and about a foot. Thus far this season, the Buffalo Bills have not gone for a first down on fourth down. And it would appear that Joe Pendry and Doug Flutie have something in mind, and here comes Flutie. Buffalo in four previous games, Zero for zero on fourth down conversions. Fourth and a foot here with a three-point lead at the 28-yard line. Because we'd what? We'd only be talking about uh, how big of a field goal here, Vern. 45 uh, yards is right. And there's Linton. He got it. And let me make a quick correction. Earlier in this ball game, they did go for the touchdown on fourth and go fourth and one but it's that field goal first. distance and is well within Steve Christie's range but again the Buffalo Bills liking their offensive line liking that they are becoming more physical every week a lot of changes up front Ostrowski to center Ziegler to right guard Robert Hicks in at right tackle and the uh, weight films quick to point out that they are starting to find uh, trying to find a group play fake Footy finds Molds, and he is out of bounds with the first and goal at the eight-yard line in front of Chad Scott. A gain of 19. That's Lee Flowers. His job is to get the hit. Eric Molds, a la Michael Irvin, just takes Flowers and throws him out of the way. You see, that's what a receiver learns after a couple of years in the National Football League. How to separate yourself from a corner or a safety. Well, one way is to grab them and throw them. Six receptions on the day for Moltz. Just another big day. Woody goes back left side. Reavers no wide open. Touchdown, Buffalo. the old play where you fake the block this is shades of Bob Tucker in the New York Giants 25 years ago Jay Reimers disappears after blocking down low and away he goes that's that's one of the oldest plays in an NFL playbook and Jay Reimers and the Bills just ran it to perfection when you're down on all fours, it's pretty pretty easy for a secondary to lose track of a guy. I don't know what, what impresses me more, that the Reimers must play, or are you calling Bob Tucker's name? Well, Bob Tucker used to do that all the time yeah. for the New York Giants. He used to do it all the time. It's so effective. Now, it takes a while to develop. It really does. Let's take a look at it here again, folks. It's, it's so deceptive. Here's Reimers right here, and he's just going to fall down. Watch him go in, cut the defensive end. All right, right there. He cuts the defensive end. Now, from that moment on, who in the Steelers secondary is keeping track of it? Well, the answer is nobody. And, of course, if you're the defensive end and you get cut, your job is to get off and get into pursuit as quickly as you can. So, in reality, you're releasing the guy who's going to end up killing you. Good looking play. I always like that thing. There's a young man who was a quarterback behind Elvis Gerback at Michigan. And in his junior season decided uh, he might have a bigger future as a tight end. Well, that's because he was getting too big to play quarterback. 6'5", <laughs> 254. You, you, you can play yourself out of a position. Or weigh yourself or grow yourself out of it, I should say. 24-14. This one grabbed by Blackwell at the six-yard line to the outside and is out of bounds. Well, it was set up by the Sam Rogers interception, the first Pittsburgh turnover of the day. 
And a well-designed play leads to the touchdown for the to Reimersma. Well, it just evens up the clubs, doesn't it? Because each one of them had a turnover that directly led to a, to a touchdown for their opponent. Yeah, you go back to the opening series for Buffalo, and it was Antoine Smith fumbling his first carry. That led directly to a Cordell Stewart Heinz Ward touchdown. Twenty-one seconds to go, third quarter, ten-point game now. Here's Stewart rolling out and finding his tight end, Mitch Lyons, number 85. Ken Irvin defending. And that will be the end of three. End of three, three quarters with Buffalo leading Pittsburgh 24-14. We'll return to Ralph Wilson Stadium right after this message and a word from your local station. ジョギングよりも早くカロリーを燃焼させサイクリングよりも効果があり体に衝撃の少ない運動それはクロスカントリースキーイージーグライダーはクロスカントリースキーを応用した全身運動で体全体を引き締めトータルなフィットネス運動に役立ちますどなたでもお手軽にご自宅でクロスカントリースキー運動が楽しめるイージーグライダーです1日おきに約20分の運動を1週間に3回つまり1時間の運動で全身の主要な筋肉組織に働きかけてくれますイージーグライダーのグライダーパッドに乗り自分に合った運動強度を設定することでクロスカントリースキーと同じ感覚のフィットネス運動が体に無理なく実践できますイージーグライダーの運動は全身のエアロビクス運動ですから持久力がつきます胸腕背中ふくらはぎ太ももなどの筋肉を鍛えますスムーズでリズミカルな運動はジョギングなどで起こりやすい怪我の心配はありません健康的な体づくりがこのイージーグライダーの運動で可能になります頑丈な構造のメタルフレームの本体は簡単に折りたためて収納にも便利スポーツクラブに通うのは大変ですがイージーグライダーはお値段もお手頃で自宅で楽しめますクロスカントリースキー運動が簡単に楽しめるイージーグライダーイージーグライダーの運動は主要な筋肉組織に働きかける全身運動健康的な体づくりにきっと素晴らしい効果をもたらしてくれるでしょうクロスカントリースキー運動器具イージーグライダー19800円お支払いは商品と引き換えまたは各種クレジットカードがご利用いただけますお申し込みはフリーダイヤル0120874422今すぐお電話ください話題のフリーイメール「ゲリアッジャパン c o j p Welcome back to Ralph Wilson Stadium, Orchard Park, New York. And the start of the fourth quarter, 24-14, Buffalo has the lead. Pittsburgh with the ball, second down at their 34. Vern Lundquist, Dan Deardorff, Bonnie Bernstein here, week five of the NFL on CBS, the first of the doubleheader. Many of you will see Miami and Indianapolis in game two. Hand off, Richard Huntley, nothing there. He is knocked down as he gets to the 35. Tonight on the CBS movie, a thousand tons of runaway steel, and only one man can stop it. Robert Urich stars in Final Run. That's tonight on CBS. Third and three, Pittsburgh, and Cordell Stewart brings them up. Twenty-four, fourteen. He'll go from the shotgun. Still think he'd help loosen things up a little bit if he'd take off with the football when the opportunity presented itself. Instead, he throws it right and it's tipped away by Ken Irvin. Intended for Troy Edwards, it'll be fourth down. And a flag on the play. This uh, could be a personal foul, Buffalo. Late flag, Ed Hockley. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense, number 90, lowered his head and hit the quarterback. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. You can't make yourself a missile. Phil Hansen is number 90. All right, he's got a line stunt. He loops all the way around the corner. Well, he hit him with the head, 
Hardly what I would call a violent hit. It appears the crowd here at Ralph Wilson Stadium agrees. It's the lowering of the head. Right, Tony, the NFL just will not tolerate it. It doesn't have to be a killer hit. You can't hit somebody with the top of your helmet. Crown of the helmet. Here's a reverse to Hines Ward. What the heck was that? An ugly play. Yeah, it's, it's still going. Bruce Smith liked it. Henry Jones makes the tackle. All right, watch this. Starts with a fake to the bus. Who, I mean, not a fake. He gets it. He hands off on the reserve, uh, the uh, reversed award. It's totally disrupted, though, by Bruce Smith and his penetration up the field. See, there's Bruce Smith waiting for Ward. And Ward actually did a heck of a job getting away from Bruce. By that time, way too much pursuit to make anything happen. Second down and 15. Shotgun again. Stewart pulls up, lets it go. And that one is caught. Holosek <laughs> makes the tackle at the 50-yard line on Mark Bruner, number 87. And that will bring up a third down. Well, we mentioned a moment ago, this is the first of two for you on week five, a doubleheader on CBS. Most of you will see Miami at Indianapolis. Others watch the Broncos go in to take on the Raiders or Baltimore at Tennessee. Second game of our doubleheader on CBS. Third and ten. Twenty-four fourteen. Shovel pass, Huntley. And this one is stopped by Kurt Schultz. It'll be fourth down. Well, they ran it effectively in the first half. The identical play. Cordell Stewart shoveling it to Huntley, but this time Buffalo ready for it and all over it. Matter Got a of little fact, Marcellus Wiley made a uh, pass well, at it. He sure did. And, and not only that, but he, he got a right hand out and and uh, actually hit Huntley hard enough that he he disrupted his ability to get upfield. And that brings Josh Miller on on fourth down. Kevin Williams waits at the 10. Bounces at the two and will be down by Chris Oldham at the six yard line. Well, there was your 60 degree and the Bellotta ball. うん、でもやっぱりここへ来てあれですねスチュワートとあのー、本当にフルーティー No.65 in white Alan Fanica high ankle sprain suffered in game one missed last week uh, back now and, and it looks like he's still suffering well as a competitor you want to come back you want to come back but you come back so early you can really retard your progress well, poor field position now for the Buffalo Bills. Brody will hand it off. Antoine Smith out across the 10 near the 11 yard line. 24 14 turnover so often a part of the game, and we've seen one for either side lead to a touchdown now. Yeah, really. And uh, of course, uh, this is a stadium and an environment where the crowd here is so noisy that it's nothing new to see the opponent commit a lot of turnovers here. I, I am just a little taken back, Vern, to this point in time that, that we haven't seen Cordell try to challenge Buffalo's defense by running the football. He's trying to beat them strictly throwing the football. And, and you know, that's not necessarily the best part of his game. Second down and seven. That one out of the middle. And uh, down at the 15. Well, let's go back to New York and check in with Jim Nance. six on the play. All right, Mike Shanahan making the oh. announcement earlier this week that he was going to bench Greasy and start Brister, and now, whoops. <laughs> Mike Shanahan has to think that he is in, that he ate a lot of pepperoni right before going to bed, and this has been a night-long indigestion. It won't go away. Here's Flutie out of the backfield, and the catch made by Andre Reed up at the 21-yard line in front of Chad Scott. LeVon Kirkland with pressure on Doug Flutie. Doug Flutie 
being very effective, very efficient. Look at him stand in there. He knows he's going to get smothered by LeVon Kirkland. You know, I'm, I'm telling you something, folks. This is not a real big guy, and he sees Kirkland coming. Kirkland outweighs Doug Flutie by about 100 pounds mm -hmm. and had a 15-yard running start at him. You think it takes a little courage to play quarterback in this league? From the 21, first down. Hand off to Antoine Smith. He searches for something on the right side, and there's nothing there. Coming up tonight on CBS on 60 Minutes, even after a bank robber shot several cops and civilians before being wounded by police. Would the LAPD let him bleed to death in the street? The robber's family thinks so. That story and more on 60 Minutes than it's touched by an angel, followed by the CBS Sunday movie Final Run. Second down and 9, 9 12 to go, and Pittsburgh trailing by 10. Linton back in the backfield. Here's the blitz. Lee Flowers coming for Flutie. He gets it in the hands of Jonathan Linton, and John Fina was out there to provide a block. LeVon Kirkland had a player down. Oh, and is that? We've got an injured Steeler right on the Buffalo bench. It's that Kirkland. is LeVon Kirkland. Patting his left leg. Oh, everybody who loves the Steelers right now, their heart is skipping wildly. あの自分の体重でね、あ,あの人工芝で引っかかってね、はいはいはい、っていう怪我も起こりえますからね。ですからちょっとあの彼の場合は先ほど申し上げた。Here's the good news: Lamont Kirkman did get up and walk off unaided, and、uh, is on the Pittsburgh bench now. I'll show you what happened after this play. Andre Reed comes to the near side, matched up against Dwayne Washington. First down and ten after that 14-yard gain. Blitz coming. Flutie rolling out to his right. Jason Gilden is there, and Flutie avoids the tackle, throws it away in the general vicinity of Sheldon Jackson. Well, wow. once he's outside that pocket, Vern, all he has to do is get it back to the line of scrimmage.、Uh, this is a remarkable example of Flutie staying alive. Looks like he's going to go down twice. First is Jason Gilden, number 92. I mean, he actually, he's got a hand. And secondly, <laughs> how does he get away? It's Orpheus Roy. This is, it's just a remarkable, I don't, the guy's like poured Mazzola oil all over himself <laughs> before he runs out there and starts squirting around. He's squirting. And here's the handoff to Jonathan Linton and、uh, tackled by Orpheus Roy. Well, as we said, LeVon Kirkland is apparently okay. Let's go back and take a look at the end of that、uh, little screen pass to Jonathan Linton and what happened to LeVon Kirkland. There's LeVon Kirkland right there. Now watch him as he goes off the field into the Buffalo bench. Now take a look at how he gets it right there. You see it catch his left foot sliding across the AstroTurf and then catches it and drags it underneath. That was a.、Uh, You know, that's one of those things that、uh, you can really specifically look at that and wonder if he would have really caught that shoe with that kind of traction on a, on a real grass field. On third down, Flutie out of the shotgun, deep left side. And、uh, yeah, that. Woo! There was a Mallard. <laughs> I think I saw Bud Grant with a shotgun in the neighborhood. That one took off. It was intended for peerless price, and it was anything but. The pass ruled uncatchable. Here's Doug Flutie after the pass. Man, I just don't know what happened. The ball ruled by the officials to be uncatchable. Could have had something to do with the fact that it landed about 10 yards out of bounds. Troy Edwards awaits the punt of Chris Moore. Troy Edwards hasn't been the most comfortable-looking guy back there、uh, in punt coverage.、He's、let a couple go that maybe he should have handled. Here's Moore, and Edwards drifts over to his right, grabs it at the 
the 15 yard line and looked like he bobbled it just a bit. But he did the right thing. He fielded the football. Right, you can't let that ball bounce in that situation. Steelers have it down by 10. ねえ二十七十九ヤードほどありますが<笑>さあどうでしょうねそうですね、うん、まああの We mentioned earlier that Troy Edwards、uh, talking with us last night said he didn't feel real comfortable returning punts No and there's、uh, some good fortune on his part that nobody in a Buffalo uniform put a hit on him right after catching that ball because he saw him bobble it a couple times Here's Stewart on first down gets a block on Gabe Northern and struggles to get back to the line of scrimmage before Phil Hansen makes the tackle. Well, let's check in with Bonnie Bernstein. All right, for an injury update for you on LeVon Kirkland, sprained left ankle, the trainers taped it up. I just saw him walking around a couple minutes ago on the sideline and he's not limping. Questionable to return, but probably more likely than guard Alan Fanica, who you remember has been out the last couple weeks with a high ankle sprain on his right leg. Well, he just sprained his left ankle, taped it up. He's having a hard time getting up on his toes. He looks very frustrated. His helmet's off, and he is questionable. Burn. All right, Bonnie, here's Stewart back. Flips it out to Jerome Bettis. Gets a little blocking help, and、uh, he is knocked down as he gets to the 30. That's going to leave a third and one. Well, the Steelers in the second half have punted three times, and Cordell Stewart threw the one interception picked off by Sam Rogers that led to the last Buffalo touchdown. And you know that followed probably their best half of production since their their opener against Cleveland.、And、they just routed the routed the New Browns. Kevin Gilbride in his first year as the offensive coordinator with this team. Hines Ward breaks off to the left side. Third and one. Four-man Buffalo rush. Stewart up, fires, has a man open. First down at the 36-yard line. Catch is made by Courtney Hawkins, number 88. We give a lot of credit to this Steeler offensive line. They haven't played all that well the last couple weeks, and they've been turning it. Look at this pocket that they give Cordell Stewart. Bruce Smith coming from your left. Wayne Gandy's going to take him upfield. The two guards up front, Stye, Dawson, Duffy, all very effective, and they give they gave Cordell a chance to step into that throw and deliver it with some accuracy. On first and ten, here's Stewart back again, deep left side, man open. It's Mitch Lyons, and the second team tight end. A flag is down as well. Makes the grab for a gain of 25. If the play stands, well, somebody from Buffalo was in the neutral zone, and they weren't drawn. And Sean Price, the defensive end, was the guy who was off sides. But look at this pattern downfield, and that time Cordell got enough air underneath it to find Lyons again over by the sideline. Mark Bruner is the starting tight end for the Pittsburgh Steelers, but Mitch Lyons today has been the more active in the receiving game. Second catch for Lyons in the ball game here. Stewart taking off. This one designed run all the way, and it's oh, and at the end of the play, the ball comes up down by contact. And I think this is overdue. Cordell Stewart getting out and trying to make something happen, running the football. He's too much of a talent to restrict him to the pocket and only have him throw the football. Now, right now, everybody in the Buffalo defense is talking to themselves about we got to watch this. We got to watch for Stewart. They haven't been doing it so far. They haven't had to. Thomas Smith tried to get it out. Here's the draw play to Huntley. Out of the shotgun as Stewart hands it off, and they're、uh, at the 22-yard line. The tackle made by Bruce Smith, number 78. They'll go with a no-huddle offense now. Pittsburgh quickly at the line of scrimmage. Second and seven. And of course, under four minutes in this game, they better have some urgency. That one complete at the 17-yard line in front of Thomas Smith. The catch made by Troy Edwards and the hit delivered by Kurt Schultz. Again, no huddle. And they better move with some alacrity here. Ooh, I like that. Guy slips alacrity in in the middle of the fourth quarter. Well, I'm not sure the Steelers were snet at the set at the snap. Snet. I don't think they were snet at the snap. <laughs>
Flag is down. Yeah, did they get up and get uh, did they get up and get in position? I think that uh, Dawson to Stewart snap was a bit premature. Offside. So much for what I know. Buffalo. Oh. Here's Ed Hockley. Offside. Defense. Number 78 is in the neutral zone at the snap. Five-yard penalty. A result in a first down. Well, the reason Bruce Smith was caught in the neutral zone is that that snap surprised everybody. I didn't think the Steelers were set. Apparently they were. So they've got, finally got a little momentum here. Huntley back in the lineup. And it's first down. Here's Ed Hockley. If we're going to adjust the clock. 336, I believe he said. 336. Right. Thank you. Ed Hockley, one of the better officials in the league in his use of the, uh, of the crowd mic, being at the referee's microphone. Very good at explaining that. Stewart in the corner. Over Smith, diving try, being flagged down. Thomas Smith. Yeah, Thomas Smith beaten on the play. Plays Troy Edwards instead of the football, and that's, there's no way that doesn't bring the flag. Pass interference, defense, number 28. The ball is placed on the one-yard line, first down. Got no safety help when the receiver, what, look at this good release, back to the outside, Edwards getting his, Edwards getting his hands all over Thomas Smith. Edwards could have easily have been called for offensive interference. Here's the play, they hand it off to Bettis, jammed up. He did not get in, it'll be second down. Ted Washington and Marlo Perry. A lot of penetration by the guys in blue. Not the quickest developing play, but that skirmish at the line of scrimmage, won by Buffalo. Second and goal. Inside give, no, play fake. Stewart, over the head of Bruner, incomplete. Good coverage from Kurt Schultz. Third down. Well, they were in the formation. They really made it look like they were going to hammer away again. And, and you know, in, in the play calling situation here that Kevin Gilbride is going through with his Steeler offense, he has to be frustrated by the inability of his big backs to pick up critical short yardage situations. Bettis. He got in, I believe, didn't he? Touchdown. And that was anything but a secure handoff. Behind John Whitman. And you're right, it was not cleanly put away by the bus. But he did end up in the end zone. He finally had a surge over there on the right side. Dawson, Stey, and Anthony Brown got a good push. And now the extra point from the rookie Chris Brown out of Mike Tomzak's hole. Two minutes and 44 seconds remaining. Steelers trail Buffalo by three. さあこれで終盤になって。ちょっと面白くなってきましたそうですよねだから2分44秒というところでどういう風に判断するかですよねまあ2.44 Kevin Williams moves up and grabs this at the eight-yard line. Coming left, trying to get by Troy Edwards, and he does, and then is forced out of bounds by Chris Oldham at the 28-yard line.
Monday on CBS, the King of Queens he is ready to be a godparent, but his wife says no. Who's going to win the battle for the baby? All new King of Queens Monday on CBS. First down and 10. And Buffalo holding on to a three point edge, trying to win their fourth in a row. And Pittsburgh trying to avoid a losing record five games in for the first time in the decade. Run blitz coming. And movement to the right side as Jonathan Linton is tackled by LeBron Kirkland, who is back on the field. Timeout called by Pittsburgh. Well, LeVon Kirkland back in the game. Good news for Pittsburgh after how we saw he awkwardly rolled over his ankle. Looks like he's moving pretty good. They had the right blitz call. They really stacked it up at the point of attack, but Linton stayed active, bounced outside, and picked up a couple yards when really there was, looked initially like that was good for a loss. Now, Buffalo knows they saw Pittsburgh overplay the line of scrimmage at time and anticipating the run game as you take a look at what's coming up next, but you know, Joe Pendry got to be thinking about maybe I take a chance. Do I? It's a, uh, you know, this is where an offensive coordinator really earns his money. He's, did you see they had nine guys on the line of scrimmage last night? If we, if we can catch them in that, we've got a chance for a, a back-breaking big play. Now let's see what uh, Joe Pendry and Wade Phillips, who of course is one of the few coaches in the league who never wears a headset on the sidelines. And Pendry has... Uh, and he's played Doug Flutie. Second and eight. And again, the blitz comes, and it's a handoff up the middle to Linton, who pops it. Yep. Oh, boy, that was close. And he's going to be close for a first down. Well, again, uh, give Jim Haslett credit. He, he calls the right play. You put your players in a position to make the play, and what happens is it's a missed tackle. Jonathan Linton makes a guy miss. You've got every gap filled right there. Joel Steed is in a position to make the play. Your nose tackle, your all pro nose tackle, and Linton bounces off and picks up big yardage. And how big was it? First down yardage. With 2.13 to go. Jim Haslett there, the defensive coordinator of the Steelers, he, he put his guys in the right place. That's all you can do. Haslett, a former second round draft pick of these Buffalo Bills, where he played as a linebacker. Rushing yardage, Pittsburgh 48, and Buffalo 102. That's a woeful number for Pittsburgh. Another timeout called by Pittsburgh, so they elect to stop the clock with 2.09 remaining. They will get another stoppage of the clock at the two minute warning. But in the meantime, Doug Flutty and the Bills have a first down and 10. Now we talked a little bit, uh, Dan, about the Pittsburgh schedule. Uh, Buffalo has a home game coming up against Oakland, and then they've got three in a row on the road. They go outside the division now for the next five weeks. They are at Seattle, at Baltimore, at Washington before the return engagement against Miami back here on November 14th. And then the uh, tag end of the schedule, New York Giants, at Arizona, at New England, and Indianapolis. But the Bills trying to go four and one. And the only uh, good news you can say about that three games away, Vern, is that the first one, they have to go all the way to the West Coast, but then in going to Baltimore and Washington, at least uh, those are relatively short trips. At the, the start of the day? Of course, at yeah. the start of the day. Linton back on the field now. And they put one second back on the clock. It shows 2 10. about a yard. I am really impressed with Jonathan Linton and his ability to keep those feet churning and stay alive. Two minute warning. Three point game. Senso. So there are 20th century of Kataru Ued and the end of the world. The first time of the Second World War to the end 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 of the Second World War. 近代戦争の全貌を捉えた衝撃の映像記録の決定版
アメリカタイムライフビデオとフランクリン・ミントが送る壮大なスケールのノンフィクションシリーズ「戦争の世紀」。激しい戦闘の中で撮影された貴重な映像が非常なまでにえぐり出す恐るべき20世紀の肖像今なら第1巻「ドルマンディからライン側へ」がわずか1950円でお手元に今すぐお電話をテクノロジーの進歩とともにエスカレートする新兵器の開発競争その恐怖の代償をカメラが目撃2巻目からは毎月1本ずつ3950円でお届けします未公開映像の満載衝撃の映像証言で綴る必見のドキュメント「狂気と野望」「正義と勇気」の全記録世界戦争にまつわる隠された真実を徹底的に解明今なら第1巻「ノルマンディーからライン側へ」がわずか1950円2巻目からは3950円でお届けします店頭では手に入りません今すぐお電話を今なら第1巻ノルマンディー
you know, would there be a Buffalo hangover after that huge win of theirs down in Florida last uh, on Monday night when they beat the Dolphins? It's when you have yearned to accomplish something like that for so long, uh, it, it, it can have the effect where it's tough to regain that focus, Fern. And apparently Wade Wilson was successful in getting his team to say, look, we can't trip and stumble over Pittsburgh. Not at all. Big day for Andre Reid as well. Let's go down to Bonnie Bernstein, who is with Doug Flutie. All right, Doug, one of the best defenses in the AFC. How did you have everything clicking on all cylinders? Uh, we were throwing the ball well. Our receivers did a great job of getting open. They, uh, they came after us at times. We picked things up. A couple times they came through and all that. But the bottom line was our receivers were beating their DBs and getting open for me. How nice is it for Andre Reid and Eric Moulds to have a great half and then to go out in the second half and just go after Reimers and connect up with him? Uh, it, I was happy for Andre to catch a number of balls and make some big plays for us. Um, he was a little down after last week. He didn't get the ball thrown to him much. And sometimes that's the nature of the offense. And, you know, no one feels worse than I do when he doesn't get his hands. Eric Moulds finally gets his big breakout play. Hadn't had a long one yet this year. And so, you know, guys were just making plays. You posted some big numbers against the Colts earlier this year, but would you say this ranks among your best, maybe most important this, day? This was uh, much better than the Colts game, no question, because we were sticking in the end zone, um, didn't throw any interceptions. That's the bottom line. I don't care if we get the touchdown pass or we catch it at the one and run it in, just get it in the end zone. But the bottom line is don't turn the ball over. Okay, look ahead for me. you got Oakland at home next week, then you go on the road for three. How important is it to just kind of keep that momentum going and get those home wins? Yeah, you've got to win at home in this league. You got, it's so difficult to win on the road that if, if you can win all your home games and maybe split on the road or just put yourself in a position to win those games on the road. Uh, but you got to take care of business at home. All right, Doug, thanks for the time. Congratulations. Thanks. Vern, will send it up to you. All right, thank you, Bonnie. Doug Flutie and the Bills go to 4-1. and one. And, uh,